It's almost 2024. It's time for you to stop wasting time and work more efficiently inside of your editor. So I asked on Twitter what people's favorite VS Code tips were, and here's what they came up with. At the end, I'll show you three additional tips, one that I've never heard of before, one that I think is the most useful, and one that is pretty controversial. I'm curious what your opinion is. Let's see. All right, you'll have a link to the tweet in the description below, so you can go and check all the different things that people added, but this video is basically going to cover them all in addition to a few others, so you can just watch the video and get everything that you need. So let's start with some really super basic ones, but first, a little bit of context. I am on a Mac, which means when I say a shortcut uses command, if you're on a Windows machine, you're probably gonna use control instead. So I will use command because I'm on Mac. You, if you're on Windows, will use control as the equivalent. So a couple of basics here, just to start is control or command S to save. So if I change this and then S, notice that goes away. That's pretty basic, most people know that. Now, one cool thing that I actually learned is control on Mac and then a number will take you to that tab. So one, two, three, four, et cetera. I've never actually used that. I always use control and tab on Mac and then control shift tab to tab backwards. So that's what I usually use, but it's kind of interesting to be able to use control and then the number of the tab that you want and be able to go directly to it. Now, another one that I use all the time is command W, it'd be control W on Windows, which is to close a file. Now, if you get really aggressive and you wanna rage quit on VS Code, you can hold down command and shift when you do this, and now the whole thing is gone, which is terrible for this demo, so let me bring this back up. But you do have that option. If you wanna rage quit out of VS Code, you could do that right there. All right, now one that I think is really important, especially for working with VS Code from your terminal, is to add VS Code to your path. Now the cool thing is there's a command right inside of VS Code that allows you to do this. And that is add VS Code to path or install code command in path. I didn't get that right at all. So the shell command install code command in path that now allows us to do things like run code from our terminal. I uh, didn't actually do anything there, uh, but if I wanted to open up a new project, if I wanted to open this project up in a new window, I could say code dot slash, but what if I change directories and now I wanna open a project that's inside of this one into a new instance of VS Code, I can now use the command and do code and then the folder name that I wanna open. Now, what if I wanna open this inside of the same window? This is one tip that I use all the time. You can pass the dash R flag, which allows you to reopen or open the project that you're trying to open in the same window that you're already in. So code dash R will do that and it won't open a separate window. Notice that other window doesn't exist. So I'm actually going to do this again and then open it back up my James Q Quick website with that same command. All right, now a couple here that I use all the time, you may have actually noticed me doing this already is I toggle open and close the terminal. So on Mac, it's control tilde will toggle open and close the terminal. Now this is great for me to be able to get more space for me to see and write my code. I also use command B to open and close the sidebar, which I use all the time. So command B to open and close the sidebar, control and tilde to toggle open and close the terminal. Now, there is also shortcuts for each one of these individual windows. So command shift B is to toggle, or excuse me, command B is to open the sidebar as a whole. But let's say I wanna go to something specific like the extensions tab. Well, if I hover on extensions, it's gonna show me that this is command shift X. So command shift X will take me straight to that. So if I close this completely and then do command shift X, it'll take me right there. Now we can hover on a few other of these. If I want the file explorer, it's command shift E. So if it's on the extensions tab now, I close it and then do command shift E, it opens it back up and takes me to the file explorer. So command shift E for file explorer, we'll come back to search in a minute. There's source control, which is command shift G, there's uh, X for extensions and so on and so on. So knowing those allows you to navigate to exactly the thing you want and close and hide it when you don't need it. Now, one command that I don't actually use myself, but people love is the ability to get rid of all of the distractions. And that is command K and Z. Now, I think that shortcut for me is overridden with something else. Again, it's not one that I use all the time, but I can open this up like so, and notice that it gets rid of all the distractions, all the toolbars and the panes and terminal window, et cetera. So now I have just my code to focus on, which a lot of people do love, and it centers it on the screen so it's in one consistent place. Now, it's not something that I use very often, so I don't even have that shortcut working, but it may be worth you looking into if you really wanna be hyper-focused on your code. 
Now, there's one extension that I thought was really interesting that someone mentioned, which is the auto hide pane extension. And what this does, I actually have it installed and I have it disabled. So if I install it, what happens is I could open the sidebar window, but when I click and the terminal, I think, but when I click into my code, it moves all that stuff and gets rid of it, which is actually kind of interesting. So either I'm looking in the terminal or I'm looking in the sidebar, but when I go to my code, it gets rid of all those distractions. I think that's a little aggressive for me with my ability to use those shortcuts. I would rather just use my own shortcuts, but if it works for you to just auto hide all that stuff, that's a great extension to look into. All right, let's talk about searching for files. One command that I use more than almost any is command P. And this opens up the ability to uh, search for files. So I could scroll through manually with my keyboard, or I could start to type in about callout.astro. Now, one quick tip on this that you may not have known though, is if we just open this up from scratch, notice that uh, there are several things that are in the source pages API, for example. So if I wanted to search for one of those files, I could do source pages API, for example. And there's three of these in here. There's speaking, newsletter, and subscribe. But this has fuzzy search, which means I can type anything that I want to in any order of where it might appear inside of that string. So if I were to just type newsletter from the beginning, it automatically goes and grabs things that are appropriate based on it containing newsletter in the file path as a whole. So this fuzzy search allows you to really quickly search for your files, not necessarily caring or needing to know which folder they're in, unless you need to and you can specify. And this is the quickest way that I found to be able to find and open files inside of VS Code. Now, another way that you can search is maybe by properties inside of your code. So if you wanna search within the same file, you can do Command Shift F. Now, one thing I do all the time is I'll do Command Shift F, and then I also have a shortcut for Command Shift H which will automatically take me down to the replace. And I can replace this with nonsense. And then one quick shortcut here that's helpful on Mac is command and enter. We'll go ahead and replace all of those fill whites with nonsense, not really what we wanna do, which leads me to another quick shortcut that you probably already know, which is command Z or control Z to undo. I use this all the time as well, where I make a change, I realize I messed it up, I command Z to get out of it. Now we talked about searching inside of a local file. What if we wanna search in all of our files? Well, we can do Command Shift F on Mac and we can type in the same thing. I don't know why I have writer in here. Let's talk about, uh, let's look for H16, a height of 16. Well, we use it in these different files. We can open these and it takes us directly to the line of code. We can also add in a replacement in here and then hit this button to be able to replace them all. So this is all the ability to search within a file, to replace in a file, and then do a global search and replace as well across all of your files inside of your project. Now, if you're working with Markdown, one interesting one that you should probably know is the ability to open a Markdown preview. Now in the documentation, and I can show you this inside of the shortcuts, inside of keyboard shortcuts, if we look at Markdown preview, there is a shortcut for command shift V and then open it to the side is command K and V. Now those shortcuts are not working for me specifically because I've got some other things set up. But if you were to have open a markdown file, and then you were to trigger that short shortcut, so I can just do this here, it can open the preview and show exactly what this is going to look like. It can also open one to the side, which is gonna be side by side with your code and automatically scroll through the markdown as you scroll through your code. So if you're working with markdown inside of your blog or whatever else, this is a great one to know so you know exactly what this is gonna look like. Now, one thing that I use specifically is the front matter extension, which allows me to start my server and then get a preview of a blog post right inside of VS Code so I don't even have to go to the browser to see what it actually renders like. I could go to the open preview, and this is gonna take me to that blog post, not just as raw markdown, but also as it's going to look on my actual site. So I think this is another next level extension that you should consider if you're working with markdown. All right, one thing that I like a lot is the ability to select all instances of a word. And you can do this with shift, command, and L. So you can see inside of here, there's at least two instances of PY-10. So this will select all of those. Now, if you wanted to do this a little more manually, you could come inside of here and do Command D. Now, I like Command D because it will select the entire word. Now, this gets a little tricky because of dashes, but if it doesn't have dash, it will select the entire word as you can see here. But if I were to select something, so if I go back to PY10 
and I do Command D again, it's going to then select the next instance. So I can do Command D to select as many instances of that thing as I want, and then I have multiple cursors, which is another tip to be able to edit these right inside at the same time. So I could change this to PY12 if I want to. Notice that updates in both places. Multiple cursors are extremely powerful and I highly recommend them. Now let's talk about another way that we can do multiple cursors. I hold down Shift, Option, and Command, and I can now use my arrow keys to arrow down to get multiple cursors. Now this is really cool because I can select all of these at the same time, copy them to my clipboard, and then what happens is if I continue to have the same amount of multiple cursors, I can paste and it pastes those appropriately based on the line that I'm in, which is really neat. So if I were to use those as variable names, for example, I could come inside of here and just paste them. And now they will paste appropriately based on what I copied in the same exact order, which is really, really powerful. So VS Code multiple cursors is absolutely one of the most effective tools that you can have to kind of really increase your workflow inside of VS Code. Now, another one I love is the ability to select and then use function on Mac and then F2. And now this is rename symbol, which allows me to rename this to updated title, for example, press enter. And this is updated not only the definition here or the name here, but also every instance of this inside of my code as well. Now, one tip that you may not know exists is the ability to hover over a function that is imported over here, hold down command, and then be able to click on this to go to that definition. This is extremely useful, especially in big code bases where you wanna see what the function definition is. You don't necessarily know what the file name is or where it is, or maybe the import for that is way up above the code that you're actually looking at. So you can go directly there with this command click and it'll take you directly to the definition of that function. Now, another thing that I wanna show is automatic imports, which saves you from having to manually write these import statements above. So if I were to get rid of the get sorted courses, if I were to just type this out, get sorted courses, so I know like what these functions are called, this gives me the ability to scroll down and have VS Code now automatically import that import. So there's that missing import. Now, the other way that I could do this is if I get rid of this import, I could select get sorted courses, hold down command and then period. And this gives me options for adding import for, uh, for that specific function. And that'll go and do it for me as well. So a couple of different ways to have VS code do your imports for you. So you don't have to. All right. So those are the majority of the ones that I have to show you. Now I want to get into the last three, which is one that I never knew about one that I think is the most useful and most universal. And then one that I think is the most controversial where I want to get your opinion to let me know what you think about it. So let's start with the one that I didn't know before. All right, so what this is, is we wanna be able to expand our selection. So we wanna start with maybe the word headers, then we wanna to expand to this whole line, then the whole object, then the whole function that it's in, and then the whole file. So you're kind of expanding that selection. So on Mac, we hold down con, uh, shift control command. It's kind of a tricky one. And then right arrow. So it gets the first word. Now it gets that whole line. Now it gets that whole object because it's matching based on those brackets. Then it's going to get the entire function definition. Then on the next, well, now it grabs the actual brackets themselves. And now it's going to get the actual full function declaration. And then next, it's going to get the entire file. So this is a pretty cool way. If you want to be able to select things inside of brackets, for example, you can use shift control command on Mac and then your right arrow to be able to expand and shrink that selection and be able to select exactly what you want with inside of those brackets. Now, the next thing is the one that I find the most useful, and I've already actually used it a few times in here, which is the command palette, command shift P. So if your shortcuts are ever not working or you can't remember what the shortcut is for something, you can come and type in whatever command you wanna run by triggering the command palette. So notice here, you can see a bunch of the different ones that I have used recently. One that I use all the time is open recent. So if I wanna open a different project, I'll do command shift P, type in OPE, and then it's in there. And then I click that and I can scroll down to the project that I wanna open and press enter and it'll open it right there. But anything that you want or need to do inside of VS Code, you can do from the command palette. So it is by far the most useful command for you to know when working inside of VS Code. Now, the last tip that I have from people that some people love, and I think most people hate, is we are very used to having our sidebar over here on the left. We're used to having our files over here on the left. The problem with that is if we look at where this code starts for, from a readability user perspective, the code starts right inside of here. But if I toggle this close, now my code is now a couple inches to the left on my monitor, which means I'm having to do a little bit of context switching as I'm opening and closing this window as to where my code is. But what would happen if you flipped that window, the toggle or the, uh, 
the sidebar to be on the right side, well, then you wouldn't have that problem. So let's look at our settings. This is another shortcut for you. Command and comma will open up your settings. And we can look at sidebar position. And we can now take this and set this to the right. Now, this is going to blow some people's minds. It's going to seem super foreign. But as I toggle this open and close, it seems so far away over there. As I toggle this open and close, my code, the start of my code from a readability perspective stays in the exact same spot. So a lot of people love this. I have used this some, but I always back out of it. I don't know why it's just hard to get used to, but it's hard to deny also that from a readability perspective, your code staying in the same exact place is beneficial even when you toggle that on and off. For me, I think I'm gonna take this back to the left because that's what I'm most used to, but let me know in the comments what you think about that. Would you try the sidebar on the right? Let me know what you think and let me know what other awesome VS Code tips you have that you think I might have missed. But hopefully this video was helpful and you can go into 2024 a lot more optimistic about taking full advantage of the power of VS Code.